Good morning, my dear. My lecture today about retroverted flexed uterus. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Let us start our journey. We want to discuss today the definitions, the incidence of RVF uterus, the etiology, and the degrees of RVF, the clinical presentation, diagnosis, and differential diagnosis of RVF, and lastly, the treatment. Let us start. What is meant by antiversion and antiflexion? Please lock to this picture. Lock to the longitudinal axis of the cervix and lock to the longitudinal axis of the vagina. This is the antiversion of the uterus. It means that the longitudinal axis of the cervix is inclined anteriorly to the axis of the vagina. And this angle is about 90 degree. This angle of the cervix, this is longitudinal axis of the cervix and that of the vagina. This angle is the angle of the antiversion. It is 90 degree. What about the antiflexion? Antiflexion, please lock to the longitudinal axis of the body of the uterus, this one, the green one, this axis, okay, and the depth of the cervix, this one, okay, so, antiflexion means that the longitudinal axis of the uterus is inclined anteriorly to the axis of the cervix, and this angle of flexion is about 170 degree this angle so this angle is the angle of antiversion between longitudinal axis of the surface and the depth of the vagina and the other angle between the axis of the body with that of the cervix this angle is the angle of flexion so the uterus is antiverted antiflexed Antiflexed means the body is tinted forward like that. This picture of antiverted flexed uterus as by laparoscopy, how it locks. And this picture of retroverted flexed uterus by laparoscopy. As you see here, the fundus directed posteriorly. Also, this is a picture of antiverted flexed uterus normally by transvaginal ultrasonography locked to the fundus is directed to the lower left side of the screen. This is the arrow denoting the fundus of the uterus. A while in RBF, by transvaginal ultrasonography, you will see the fundus directed lower to the right, lower side of the screen this is the direction of the fundus here is the fundus of the uterus and here is the surface what about retroversion which is our topic today retroversion and retroflexion in retroversion the cervical axis is directed backwards as here as you see here as you see here the cervical axis is directed backward in relation to the longitudinal axis of the vagina. This is the vagina. What about the retroflexion? Retroflexion means the uterine body is bent backward on the longitudinal axis of the cervix. This is the longitudinal axis of the cervix and this is the longitudinal axis of the body. The body is bent backward. Okay? What about the incidence of RVF uterus? Actually, RVF uterus is a common, and the normal uterine position is in approximately 20% of all women are RVF. So, you can say 80% of, of women AVF, antiverted flexed uterus, and the 20% of women RVF, which is retroverted flexed uterus. This is in normal cases. I'm not talking about 
the secondary RVF due to pathology. What about the etiology of retroverted flexed uterus? Maybe congenital or developmental, as in hypoplastic uterus. Also, in cases with congenital weakness of the ligaments which support the uterus. We know that many ligaments support the uterus, like round ligament like uterus sacral ligament like macroroots ligaments so weakness of these ligaments make the body of the uterus shifted backward also acquired causes include three main groups either purpural during perperium after delivery or due to pelvic lesions or due to prolapse which is the genital descent purpural why because the uterus Weight push push it backwards because the patient is lying in her dorsal position while the weight of the uterus make it directed posteriorly. Also, laxity of the supporting ligaments because this enlarging uterus gradually decreasing in size while the ligaments still lax. Also, distension of the bladder, if the patient not evacuating the, blo the, the bladder frequently, distension of the bladder pushing the uterus backward. Prolonged recumbency in, in, in women after delivery due to fatigue of labor. She spent a long time in dorsal position. This precipitate RVF uterus. What about the pelvic lesions? Any pelvic lesion which may push the uterus backwards, like any ovarian mass anterior to the uterus, pushing the uterus anteriorly, or something pulling the uterus backward due to adhesions, as in case of endometriosis or pelvic inflammatory disease, or posterior wall myoma pushing, pulling the uterus posteriorly. So, this is the pelvic lesions. What about the prolapse? In prolapse, the uterus becomes retroverted when it descends to lie along the axis of the vagina. With the descent of the uterus, it must be in RVF position to allow descent of the genital organs. What about the degrees of RVF? Three degrees, first, second, and third degree, according to the direction of the fundus of the body of the uterus. If the, the fundus is directed to the sacral promontory, this is first degree. If the fundus of the body of the, of the uterus is directed to the sacral promontory, it is second degree. If this fundus is directed to the tip of the sacrum, this, this is third degree. And let us explain more than the next slides. Please lock to this table. This is the degree of RVF, first, second, and third. And this is the direction of the fundus, and this is the direction of external os. There is the change in the direction of the external os with the degree of RVF also. In case of first degree, the sacral promontory is the direction of the... This is the fundus directed toward the sacral promontory. First degree, a while the external os is directed downward. The external os is directed downward. A while in second degree, the fundus is directed towards sacred promontory. Okay, what about the external os? The external os is directed forward, as you see here. And you see here the direction of the external os forward or anteriorly. Like that. So if you did PV and they found the cervix anteriorly, we should suggest RVF uterus. What about the third degree? The fundus is directed towards the tip of the sacrum here. Towards the tip of the sacrum. What about the external os? The external os will be anterior or forward and upward. Forward and upward. What is the clinical presentation of case with RVF? Maybe asymptomatic in 50% or more of the cases, the patient 
discovered accidentally that she has an RBF uterus. But if the patient is symptomatic, she may feel some backache, pelvic discomfort, some menstrual symptoms like heavy menstruation or polymenorrhea. This menorrhea may happen due to stenosis of the internal os due to acute retroflexion of the uterus. Also decrease venous drainage from the myometrium and the broad ligament due to acute retroflexion may cause pelvic congestion and dysmenorrhea. This paronia, this paronia may happen due to prolapse of the ovaries in Douglas pouch, also due to congested uterus. Is RVF is a cause of infertility? Rarely it, it may be considered as a cause of infertility. So if it is congenital RVF or it, this is the normal position for the woman, it is not a secondary to another pathology, rarely it causes infertility. Also, pelvic congestion syndrome, including three main criteria, heavy menstruation, leukorrhea, and congestive dysmenorrhea. Pregnancy complication may happen, but rarely, like abortion or incarceration of gravid uterus. This is the clinical presentation. This is the picture to show you how the incarcerated gravid uterus in RVF, as you see here, it can happen during the first trimester between the, the 12 and the 14 weeks. Normally, the RVF uterus, when the lady become pregnant, will grow up, and after the first trimester, it, it will grow up toward the abdomen and the no problem like that of AVF uterus. But rarely, there is incarceration that may happen with severe degree of RBF as in this picture. And to correct this, you should evacuate the bladder by inserting caster inside the bladder for this caster and try gently by, by Volsalam, try to do traction, gentle traction on the cervix like that. And at the same moment, try to push by BV uterus to get it out from this impacted area in the pelvis up inside the abdomen. Diagnosis from history, as we said in clinical presentation of the cases and the by examination and the by investigations. By examination during BV, as you see in the picture, posterior lap of the, pel of the cervix is first palpated. Not like AVF. In the case of AVF uterus, the first lap of the cervix to be felt is the anterior lap. While in RVF, because the cervix is directed forward or anteriorly, so you feel first the posterior lap of the cervix. Okay? External os is directed downward and forward. During by manual examination, you should put your finger to try to feel the uterus not as not an anterior fornix as in case of AVF, but we put it in the posterior fornix, trying to feel a while. This is also difficult if you are trying to do by manual examination to feel the uterus. It's not an easy in case of RVF, especially the third degree RVF. Okay, so you, when you do by manual examination in AVF, you put your finger the vagina in the anterior fornix while in RBF uterus you put your finger in the posterior fornix as you see here trying to feel uterus between the finger in the vagina and the supra pubic abdominal hand. What about uterine sound? If you insert cascus speculum and try to insert uterine sound the direction of the tip of the uterine sound will be directed posteriorly in case of RBF towards the sacrum. And this is very important to know the direction of the uterus. Is it RVF uterus or AVF uterus, especially with certain maneuver like ID insertion? Because if you are not aware about the position of the of the uterus, you may 
injured uterus or may perforate the uterus during ID insertion if the uterus is retroverted while you are expecting to be antiverted. This picture show you the bimanual examination. This is for case with AVF uterus, as you see here, the finger in the vagina and the anterior fornix and by the abdominal hand, you try to approximate to feel the body of the uterus. On the other side, on the right side picture, this is RVF uterus. The uterus is directed backward and try to feel the uterus by inserting the, the fingers in the vagina in the posterior fornix, not in the anterior fornix as an AVF. You put it here in the posterior fornix and try with the abdominal hand to feel the body of the uterus. It will be difficult, not an easy job like AVF uterus. RVF is not an easy to feel the uterus. Also in this picture, I show you that it is difficult to feel the RVF uterus. What about the investigation? Of course, ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound, easily can diagnose RVF uterus. As you see the arrow here, this is the fundus of the uterus, and this is the body, and this is the cervix. When the fundus is directed to the right side of the screen, down and to the right side of the screen, this is RVF uterus. If this fundus is directed to the left side of the screen, it is AVF uterus. So this picture of RVF uterus, clearly enough. By hysterosalpingogram, you can see the fundus here, directed posteriorly. I am not in need usually for hysterosalpingogram to diagnose RVF, but transvaginal sonography is quite enough and the diagnostic for RVF. What is the differential diagnosis? We can search for other causes of deep dyspronia like endometriosis, like prolapsed ovaries, like, like pelvic mass, like BID. So other causes of this dyspronia is important. Other causes of low back air, low back pain as in any other causes of pelvic congestion like pelvic inflammatory disease like uh, genital descent will cause also uh, low back pain like ovarian cyst like torsion of the next year. all of these are causes of low back pain also mass in Douglas pouch mass in Douglas pouch may be pelvic hematocele may be pelvic abscess may be uh, ovarian mass or posterior wall leomyoma, subserous leomyoma. So, differential diagnosis of mass in the Douglas pouch also in case of RVF uterus. How can you treat? Of course, as we said, many cases, more than 50 patients with RVF has no symptoms, so no treatment. There is prophylactic treatment during labor and perbarium and there is active treatment for cases with RVF and depend on if there is mobile RVF or fixed RVF. So no symptoms, no treatment. This is the rules. Then prophylactic treatment, then active treatment and the active treatment will depend on if this retroverted flexed uterus is mobile or fixed due to another cause or another pathology. If the retroverted flexed uterus is mobile, I can use pessary, I can use exercise, I can use surgical treatment. Also, I can treat incarcerated gravid uterus as we mentioned before. Prophylactic treatment during labor by avoiding bearing down and avoiding traction on the fetus before full dilatation of the cervix. Suppose you are doing vacuum delivery. Please remember that the cervix should be fully dilated because if you did it while the cervix is not fully dilated, it may cause injury to the ligaments or weakness in the ligaments, which will precipitate later on RVF uterus. Also, bearing down while the cervix is not fully dilated, doing the same job. Prophylactic treatment during perperium to ask the lady to frequently evacuate her bladder. Also, 
to lie on, on her abdomen at least for one hour every day. Also, postnatal examination and the follow up for this patient after six weeks and be sure that the uterus regain its position as AVF and if there is RVF cases, especially if symptomatic, you can start pessary treatment, insertion of pessary to correct the retroverted flexed uterus. Also, don't forget the exercise. Kegel exercise is very important to support the pelvic floor muscles and regain the strength of the muscles and the ligaments is very beneficial. What about the hot pessary? As you see in the picture, this is the hot pessary and this is how it is applied. The indication for using this pessary as increases with with verbal RVF, if you discover this verbal RVF after six weeks from delivery, you can use it. Also, you can use it as a pessary test to, to be sure if the symptoms relieved after you insert hot pessary, this indicates that these symptoms related to retroverted flexed uterus and not due to other causes. Of course, you try to exclude all other pathologies which cause symptoms similar to that of retroverted flexible uterus. Pregnancy during the first trimester up to the 14 weeks when we are sure that the uterus become an abdominal organ, you, then you remove the pessary because there is no need anymore for the pessary. If the patient symptomatic and refuse operation, you can use the Hodge pessary. Also, presence of contraindication to surgery for any uh, problem, you can use a uh, hodge pessary in replacement of uh, surgery. What about the surgical treatment? Please look to this picture to understand the idea. The idea here, the uterus is shifted backwards, and we want to shift this uterus anteriorly. Okay? So, uh, this is the round ligament, look to this picture on the left side, please. This is the round ligament. The round ligament extends from the cornea of the uterus here, anteriorly, and extend to the inguinal canal and reach its end in the labia majora. If we did shortening or plication of this round ligament, the uterus will be shifted anteriorly. Also, if we did plication for this round ligament and suturing to the anterior abdominal wall as in this picture suturing in the anterior abdominal wall in the rectus sheath this will shift the uterus anteriorly from its back position okay also another idea also is to suture or shortening of the uterus sacral ligament as in this picture this is the uterus sacral ligament this is the back view of the uterus this is the anterior view of the uterus and this is the back view of the uterus this is the back view of the uterus, and you can see here the uterine uh, sacral ligament, and here it is sutured. When it is sutured, pushing the uterus anteriorly, okay? Also, in the same picture, you can see here plication of the round ligament, as you see in the picture, making the uh, round ligament short, so shifted anteriorly. So, this is different ideas of uh, uh, correction of retroverted uterus. Another idea is to fix the uterus itself by suturing the fundus of the uterus, of the body of the uterus, to the anterior abdominal wall. But this operation nearly obsolete nowadays because it is dangerous if it is done in childbearing age. Because if pregnancy happens, circulation of the uterus and rupture of the uterus may occur. So we never fix the body of the uterus to the anterior abdominal wall as a line of treatment. We will just plicate or suture the round ligament or shortening of the uterus sacral ligament posterior to the uterus or another operation which is called baldi webster operation we uh, take this round ligament sorry we take this round ligament as you see in the picture and penetrate the broad ligament through a hole then suture this round ligament anterior to the uterus here 
to, uh, uh, sorry, suture the round ligament posterior to the uterus. So, this this is the round ligament. We penetrate the broad ligament through a hole. Then, suture post round ligament posteriorly here in the uterus. This is another operation called Baldy Webster operation. So, to summarize surgical treatment, please look to this picture. I have operation abdominal root through laparotomy or laparoscopy as in the picture here, this is laparoscopy, or vaginal root or inguinal through inguinal incision. What we are going to do through abdominal root, laparoscopy or laparotomy, we will do ventral suspension by plication and suturing round ligament to rectus sheath. Or ventral fixation by suturing the fundus to anterior abdominal wall, and we said this is risky and uh, not done anymore. Or doing called the Webster operation by round ligament sutured to the back of the uterus through a hole in the broad ligament and sutured to the back of the uterus. Through vaginal route, we can do shortening of the uterocicular ligaments through an opening the Douglas pouch through the vagina or doing the plication of the round ligament through opening of the uterocecal pouch also through the vagina. Also through inguinal incision, this is the third route as you see here in this picture, through uh, inguinal incision as we know that the round ligament extended from the uterus to the inguinal canal, we can do plication to the round ligament uh, inside the inguinal canal through inguinal incision. Lastly, if the RBF is due to a cause like endometriosis, like pelvic inflammatory disease, we should treat the cause of this fixed RBF. We call it fixed RBF because it is fixed due to adhesions. As in this picture, you can see the adhesions here due to endometriosis attaching the posterior wall of the uterus to the Douglas pouch or uh, to the sigmoid colon or nearby organs or to the ovaries. So we will cut this adhesion, what is called adhesolysis during laparoscopy. And we manage also endometriosis at the same mo moment. So in case of RBF due to secondary cause, we should treat the cause of RBF. This is the last slide. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine and